Hey guys, welcome back to another video, it's Brad. Today I wanna to just quickly talk about, seeing as I just made a video on how the Bank of England intervened in the markets to prevent a pretty much catastrophic market crash, at least in the UK for their gilts and the currency itself. <clears throat> I wanna give a bit more context because just in the last few hours, it's come out that the Bank of England has intervened because there was a very imminent uh, market failure or at least failure for UK pension funds and that's extremely significant if I just share my screen now we'll be able to see what, what I'm talking about um, if we actually go to the original tweet that I, I saw from Ed Conway on Sky Sky News um, he says on the Bank of England intervention I am told that the Bank of England responded to a run dynamic on pension funds a wholesale equivalent on the run of the run which destroyed Northern Rock had they not intervened, there would have been a mass in there would have been mass insolvencies of pension funds by this afternoon. Insane. Uh, as we know, as I said um, earlier on in the day in my last video, um, go on my channel and and see that one if you want a bit of an in-depth analysis on on what's been going on. Uh, the government, uh, the Bank of England, have been buying UK gilts in order to uh, reduce the reduce the yield and therefore increase the price. As we can see here in the one-day chart. Prices have been going up, yields have been going down, and that was the action they were taking. We didn't, we knew that they had to do it. The currency had fallen quite just drastically, close to parity with the US dollar. Um, we had also known that um, yields were going up, and that was causing massive problems elsewhere in the economy. But when you think of a an economy, you think, all right, so yields going up, mortgages are going to be going up, so on and so forth. It's, it's easy to forget how interconnected everything really is. And it did not occur to me, and it probably didn't occur to many people, that pension funds would be heavily margined on uh, bonds. You know, it's considered to be, I know American uh, treasury uh, bonds, treasury bills are considered to be risk-free assets. That's the reason why when you do a discounted free cash flow analysis of a stock or any sort of asset, you use a, a uh, risk-free rate, which is usually the rate at which the US Treasury bill trades at. So, but but the UK government bonds are still considered to be quite risk-free. You know, they're not exactly US bonds, but they're considered typically to be not very risky. But clearly that wasn't the case here. So we can see now that uh, on the news of the Bank of England beginning to intervene in the market, the GBP to USD has gone up. Whoops, I'm not showing my screen. It's actually started to, to significantly uh, increase appreciating value and going back to my point in the UK pensions the the problem was quite because it's going to become quite drastic the UK pensions hit with 100 million pound margin calls as guilt and sterling slide at least three LDI managers request emergency capital as others consider unwinds to avoid default if we go down just a little bit further for some more clarity UK pension funds have been hit with variation marginal calls of as much as a hundred million pounds each after sharp falls in gilt and sterling push mark to market valuations on derivatives and leverage repo positions heavily against them. Simon Willis, Chief Investment Officer Consultant here at XPS Pensions Group, says that he knows of three different fund managers running pooled pension portfolios that have requested emergency capital from clients to keep positions open. Unless clients ha happen to have a large amount of capital with those managers, this will lead to some temporary closing outs. The markets are moving more quickly to the timescales to transfer liquid assets from one place to another. So the teams that don't have instantaneous access to liquid assets in a large liquidity pool are starting to get hit with this. This is insane. I mean, we were literally hours away from a fundamental financial crisis. Um, people would have been insolvent. Companies would have been insolvent. People who are relying on pensions uh, in the future or maybe even now would be in a big, big pickle. So I understand why the, the Bank of England needed to instantaneously act. There was a lot of criticism, at least in the financial circles, that why on earth, at least it, it makes sense to me too, their criticism, that why on earth, in the middle of an inflationary period in time where prices are going up, would you have something that increases demand? You know, by reducing, by reducing yields and uh, using stimulative measures like buying gilts, why would you do that when you could just increase interest rates and now it's become apparent? So what does this all mean? It means in the short period of time that we've had the mini budget, which was clearly catastrophic, at least the one part of it, which included uh, tax cuts, 
we're seeing how fragile our economic system is, especially after a massive devaluation of the pound. It seems to me as if it's completely obvious now that the interest rate is going to continue to rise. I don't think we can take it for granted. How far will that rise go? It's difficult to know. I think globally, we're in a bit of a pickle. The US isn't any better. The European Union isn't amazing. The European Economic Zone is, is taking account for many different countries in all different types of um, circumstances. The Italian and Greek com economy versus the French and the German economy will require just way different approaches to this whole problem. And at the moment, the ECB, the European Central Bank, are treating it as if let's just let everything fail, which if you're a free market economist, you might support, you know, it. why not? Let's just see how things unfold. It's a free market. It will, it, will, it will sort itself out. But the problem is, is that we're in a position where, at least in the in the European Union uh, or the European Central, in the Central Bank's position, is that they've had until recently negative rates as i spoke about in one of my previous videos negative rates and if you've got somewhere like greece and italy that have really relatively large in um, unemployment rates um, given that they had negative interest rates and they've got high unemployment rates especially youth unemployment well when you begin to crank up interest rates slowly or at least a bit quicker than they have and now that they're positive how high does interest rates actually go because if, if you've got a negative interest rate, it should incentivize investment. When you increase interest rates, you should be saying to people, huh, you don't need to invest anymore. You know, maybe don't in, don't invest in that risky, you know, investment that you want to make for your for your company. Maybe don't do that today. Maybe don't do that next month. Maybe don't do that next year. So if if negative rates couldn't get them to employ more people, we're going to see mass layoffs and they're going to see some difficulty. Um I think we're going to have to just keep our eyes open, pay attention to the data and see where things fall. I also think in the UK housing market, um, this is peculiar. It's a peculiar time. Not necessarily. This It's easy to say that any news is bad news for the, for the housing market. It's, it's in a position where we've had extremely low interest rates for a long period of time. Everyone is, is really shit scared that Valuations are going to start falling. People have become over levered and house prices have gone crazy. And if you follow American um, YouTubers, they'll be talking about 20, 30 percent corrections where house prices have gone from, I'm going to use American terms, but $400,000 to six, $700,000 in the case of two years over the pandemic. There isn't many places in the UK that's seen that level of growth. And it's very easy to, to forget that America's a massive country. And even in that massive country, real estate is localized. Um, for instance, the, the places where you have had increases from 400K to 700K, let's say, may see a bigger decline than, than the place that's, that's had maybe a full 400K to 500K jump. So remember, it gets a lot of these terms are the average. They'll see a, an average fall of 20% in the, UK, in the UK housing market. But in London, which wasn't really much of a benefactor of of the pandemic boon might not see the same level of decrease as maybe Cornwall. You know, as we know, it's been massively, um, massively inflated as people bought a second home, moved away from their jobs, you know, retired early and moved away. So remember that the housing market is localized. Many of the numbers you're hearing, at least people speculated on the decline, is just the average and your area is different to others okay so in regards to this news it's bad any sort of bad macroeconomic news is bad for the housing market because it it, it makes people scared it makes people worry about the future but all in all i think we have to play it by ear okay i just wanted to quickly have an update video because this is constantly evolving this this mess i think the bank of england have done the correct thing to do by getting involved and intervening how this plays out, will Liz Truss um, pull back on the tax cuts? I feel like she surely has to now. I mean, just save face. Don't don't worry about your ego. Just do what's right. But we'll have to wait and see. And if she does, you can bet I will make a video on it. So anyway, guys, uh, thank you for watching. And I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.